Hi everyone, Andy Trice here, and welcome to part four of my series on building a mobile application using IBM Bluemix mobile services. The push notification service gives us an infrastructure for easily sending push notifications to our devices that are out in the field. It also gives us the ability to create tags so you can have devices subscribe to specific tags for the notification so you're not just doing a blanket notification that goes to everyone. And it also gives us analytics so we can monitor the performance of our push notifications. First, let me scroll down and go into our push iOS 8 service. And we're now in the UI for sending push notifications. Up here at the top, you can select which environment you should send push notifications to, your, sand, your development sandbox or the production system. And then if you want to send a notification, there's a nice little wizard that walks you through the process of sending a notification. We'll focus more on that in just a moment. Before I can send any push notifications, I have to configure my application to be able to receive push notifications. And the first step in doing that is going into your Apple developer console the first thing that we need to do is create an app ID. So I'll go into identifiers and you can see I've already created an insurance dashboard app ID right here for the bundle ID com.tricedesigns.insurance dashboard. If you go back to some of our earlier videos where I set the bundle ID, you'll notice it's exactly the same. When I go into the insurance dashboard app ID, you can see that I've configured this app ID to be able to receive push notifications. The next thing that you have to do once you've created the app ID is create a certificate. And we can jump up here to development certificates and you can see I've got my certificate already created, com.tricedesigns.insurance dashboard. This is a certificate that you have to create to provision the server to be able to send push notifications. You'll need to use the keychain program and go to the certificate assistant, request a certificate from a certificate authority and walk through this process per Apple's instructions. Once you have it created, you'll need to just export that certificate to a P12 file. You'll notice I've already got one right here. And when you save that, it's gonna ask you for a password. And once you have the P12 file, we have to upload that to our configuration on Bluemix in order to be able to send those push notifications. I'll jump back to Bluemix uh, where I'm working with push notifications and go to the configuration option on the left. And here we have to upload our P12 certificate. Just click configure push, and this is going to ask you to specify the P12 certificate. I'm going to select this one, and I will enter my password. And we'll hit save. You can see that configuration was updated successfully, and we've now configured our server to be able to send push notifications. In particular, you'll notice that I configured this for Sandbox. I haven't configured it for production yet because right now I'm just showing it on a single device. Next, let me jump over to Xcode and we can look at our code. I'm gonna go into my app delegate because really everything that I need to set up is inside of app delegate. I'm going to cover this very quickly, but you can get all of this code. You can literally cut and paste the code from the Bluemix API docs. But the first thing that you need to do is register for push notifications. This is using the normal register for remote notifications method that's available as part of the Apple developer API. And you can see that I'm registering for sound, alert, and badge notifications. I'll scroll down, and here we've added the did register for remote notifications with device token method. This method will be invoked once the app has been registered for remote notifications. And once you're registered, we're going to grab an instance of the IMF push client shared instance. So that's from the Bluemix push notification API. We're going to set our environment as sandbox because uh, right now we're working in the sandbox environment, not a production environment. And then we're going to register our device using the register device token function. Once that has been registered, the completion handler will be invoked. And I'm just writing out a long message of whether or not it was registered successfully or whether there was an error. The last piece of code I wanna look at on the client side is right here where we have the did receive remote notification function. This is going to be invoked whenever a notification is received from Apple's push notification service. The user info object is going to contain details about the notification, so if any data was passed with it or any kind of message or if there was a badge value. 
And what I'm doing is just when a notification is received, I'm going to display an alert view. And you can see I'll grab a reference to the notification content and then grab the body string just by accessing members of the NS Dictionary instance. And then we'll display the alert view. Very, very simple. Next, let me go ahead and launch the app. We'll see here now that the insurance dashboard would like to send you push notifications. We can go ahead and hit OK, and that will be allowed. Now that we have the application running, let's go back to our Bluemix dashboard and send a push notification. Inside of my push notification service, I'm going to make sure I'm on Sandbox, and I'm going to send notification. And you can see right here I've selected all registered mobile devices. As I mentioned earlier, you can send a push notification to devices that are registered to a specific tag, or you can send to a particular consumer ID, so and, you know, just to really one device. For simplicity right now, I'm just going to send this to all registered mobile devices. We'll hit next, and in my message text, I'm going to say this is a push notification from Bluemix. I could specify a URL, additional payload, I could specify the notification type, I could even set badge values, sound files, or any kind of category for notification. I'm just going to leave these with the default settings and we'll hit next. And when we hit send, this will be sent to the mobile device. And back over here on the device, we can see that the notification was received. This is a push notification from Bluemix. We can hit OK, the alert box is dismissed, and we can interact with the application as we normally would. And there we have it. We've been able to subscribe to push notifications, send a push notification through to a device, all using the Bluemix services. Thanks for watching. This has been Push Notifications. Be sure to stick around for the next video in this series where I will quickly walk through some of the monitoring and logging and analytics options that are available through the Bluemix mobile console.